So when we talk about healing, I tell people all the time that it is a journey, not a destination. You have to understand that the way it's, it's, it's not just about feeling better. You have not been living the right way for a long period of time. And so you have to begin to enact and enable and, um, and do things for yourself, things that, are, that are, are counterproductive to what you have been taught and conditioned to do, right? Like speaking up for yourself, like setting boundaries, like not avoiding conflict, but embracing conflict, right? And those are just a few, few examples, like taking care of yourself, like in practicing mindfulness. And in the beginning, all of these things are going to be very awkward because you were probably taught that they were bad, right? You are probably conditioned that they were bad, right? Going on vacations, taking care of yourself. And so, um, so what happens is that you, you have to understand that um, that process, like there's going to be a part where you're kind of learning that process and kind of feeling it out. But then after a while, it's not that you're learning it anymore. You have you know, like it's become second nature, so to speak, but you don't stop doing it. That's just now the way that you live. This is the reason why I say it's a journey, not a destination, right? There, you're still going to have your good days. You're still going to have your bad days. You know, there's going to be awkward things. Like uh, I tell people like, well, you know, I've had people set appointments with me and they'll, they'll like, I had a really bad week. I got angry last week. Okay. Everybody gets angry. What were you angry about? Right. And, and you and you begin to and because the, the problem is that you have to process your feelings when you've been in a toxic and narcissistic relationship, your feelings are oftentimes suppressed. Right. And so uh, these are all new concepts to people coming out of a, out of a narcissistic or toxic relationship. And, and it has to become second nature. I compare it quite often to a uh, to a weight loss journey. We've all seen those videos where there's a dramatic weight loss transformation where someone uh, loses like 150, 200 pounds. And, the, and then what happens is, is that once they get to their goal weight, it's no longer about, um, it's no longer about uh, losing weight, but is now about maintaining, right? That you have to maintain the work that you've done. So you, but what does that maintain, maintenance look like? You continue to go to the gym. You continue to eat right, right? And same thing here. After you learn how to set boundaries and after you set boundaries with the toxic people, you continue to do that. But it's a lot easier because the people you've surrounded yourself with value the same things that you do. Yeah, so the part two to that is, is dating. And I'm going to answer a video like, like this a little bit later. Um, it's very common people ask, like, when should I start dating? Um, it, it's not so much about time, when, or anything like that. Uh, because most likely, because dating can be a part of your healing process. You do need other people in your life. When you begin to isolate, uh, there's studies that show that when you isolate yourself, it's literally like the equivalent of smoking a pack of cigarettes per day. So eventually you do need to get back out there. Eventually you do need to, um, and I'm not saying that everyone has to be with someone. And when I'm talking about isolation, I mean, literally mean like you still need people around you, right? So, but when, but if you're, if you're looking at when you're ready to date, the, the big thing, um, it's not so much about, you're still going to be nervous. You're still going to, um, you know, because you have to put the things that you've been working on into practice in the real world. I tell people that, that if you're looking to get into the dating scene at the very least, at the very, very least, you have got to be able to set and enforce boundaries. That is the very core essence of who you are. And, until, and, and if you can't set boundaries, if you can't speak up for yourself, right? And if you can't hold a boundary, the, the dating scene becomes a very dangerous place because narcissists, toxic people um, will completely take advantage of that. That's what the problem was to begin with, right? So do you have to be perfect to get back into the dating world? No, but you do need to be able to advocate for yourself. You do need to be able to speak up for yourself and, uh, and hold boundaries.